Hello and welcome to another video, and this one we're going to be looking at the number 7, the Charger Hero. Let's take a look at the build. This guy, while I could have done another laser vomit design, similar to the Charger Special, but instead of, say, large lasers, the fact that I have one less laser hardpoint, done large pulse lasers and some combination of ER mediums, I could have done that. But instead, let's change it up, and let's do heavy PPCs. A pair of them, one on each side torso, along with four ER mediums spread across the mech in order to be our backup weapons. Otherwise, we have a light 350 engine, which gives us plenty of go juice as this assault gets up to 70.9 kph. As many heat sinks as we can fit on the mech, and then a single jump jet in order to help us get over rocks and hopefully navigate some of the maps that little bit easier. Now, for this mech, it has a few interesting quirks. It has the crit chance receiving of like minus 70 something base. And you can add a little bit of that in the uh, uh, survival tree, in the skill tree. And I've gotten mine to minus 80% which is ridiculous. Um, structure is always worse than armor because it can be crit. And when it is crit, there's an additional 15% weapon damage applied for each crit. So that can mean if you get one, two, or three crits, an AC 10, instead of just doing 10, it could do 11.5 or 13 or 14.5 damage. But with the fact that there is a minus 80% to the crit chance receiving, you are negating some of that potential damage, meaning that your structure is more durable. With that, this mech doesn't have bonus armor, it has massive bonus structure. So those work together very well, I feel, and make this mech more durable using structure. That's awesome. Also, it means that uh, I think I did the, the test on this. And this exact amount of structure, 97 points, gives you an extra two, two and a half seconds of full 12 machine gun piranha FaceTime before you die. Which, two and like two, two and a half seconds doesn't sound very long, but that's with. A controlled test of me standing still and the piranha shooting into my CT perfectly. If this is just like runbys and strafing and the piranha trying to maneuver and not die from being shot at, that two and a half seconds of exposure time to the 12 machine guns can actually be drawn out a lot because you're only going to get part seconds each time the guy can get his weapons trained on you, and they're not always going to be hitting the right spot. So, that's actually a fair amount of durability, comparatively. Which is awesome. On top of that, this mech already has some negative heat. Max that out with full negative heat in the skill tree, we have minus 15.5% heat, which for our heavy PPCs, takes us from 14.5 and minuses 2.25 from it. So, that's taking away a lot of that heat. So it's much more heat manageable with these particular weapons. Take a look at the skills this mech has. This is a full PPC design. We're not taking the laser duration. I, I did have these unlocked because I was playing around with laser builds beforehand on this. But instead, we're just focusing on getting all of the heat gen and ignoring everything else in the firepower tree. We've got all of the durability, as much as we can get. We're only missing out on 1.5% uh, crit chance receiving, which we could get if we wanted to, but we already have 80.5. That's probably enough. We have all the cool run to increase our cooling rate as much as possible. And we have 60% radar deprivation with a little bit of seismic sensor so that we don't get absolutely rained by LRMs and we can see people around corners. But that is going to be the build, and let's see some matches with our heavy PPC 
number seven. And for our first match, we have got Polar Highlands Assault. We're pushing forward, looking for the enemies, which is good for us. I mean, the fact that it's a cold map and we've got a lot of energy weapons, so we can see how fast our heat is going down, which is great. Although bad for us because, you know, it's Polar Highlands. Oh, there's the enemy off to our right side. All right, let's get down to cover. Now, if my voice sounds a little different or I uh, I cough and I don't edit it out or anything, I am recu recuperating from sickness, so that is why. And also why I haven't made a video in the last few days, because it's been like, oh, I can't stop coughing for more than, like, two minutes at a time. So there was no way I could make a video, because I couldn't ever... I couldn't ever get a straight sentence out before I had to cough again. Oh, it was horrible. But at least now I only have to cough every few minutes, so I should be able to get through a match without having to cough. But we're heading forward, seeing some foes chuck our heavy peeps out. Don't really care that much about my arms. They're not super important, actually. So I am happy with taking a little bit of damage on them as we reposition. And we get to another position here. The enemy is continuing to move. Oh, through his legs. God damn it. That's too bad. We should use our mobility here to our advantage because we have the stomps the ability to move with our engine really quickly. Ooh, we put that Night Star side torso down to red, which is excellent. Okay. And if we get this big engine stomp meta going, we can go and kick this Fafnir's butt. I think I actually hit one of my, my commando's legs. I think that was, like, the absolute horrible thing I could have done, but I think I did it. Oh, hello. Hey, I got a free hit there. All right, let's spread the damage as we back up. There's way too many people there. Oh, come on. Radar dirt. There we go. A little bit of a uh, frame drop as well. But that's okay. We take out the UAV because we're situationally aware. We'll pop back up, pump another heavy PPC in, and then drop back down. We don't need to stay up very long because we got those quick firing, quick recharging, heavy peeps as our main damage. We're up a kill, so we're doing okay, but it's still everyone, anyone's game right now. We're just watching this ridge line. Our team has sort of stopped rotating, as there really isn't any cover to go past this rotation spot. Oh, that's a trick. There the uh, terrain isn't letting us... Uh, hit that guy even though we can see it. Nice. Shoot him. Alright, we'll dive into cover here. Well, that's not really cover. Backing up. Backing up a little bit more. There we go. Those are good hits. That's the kind of stuff I want. As we are kind of stuck in a little bit of a standoff here, we can't rotate any further. They can't really clear that ledge without coming into massive, like, fire from us. So it is just a trade battle right now. Armor is gone on the CT and right and left torso, but I do have massive amounts of of structure. That is this mech's power. So not super concerned about losing that armor, as it is only a portion of my health. Oh my god! Freaking terrain. Not allowing me to hit things. Alright, gotta cool off for a bit. But it looks like, since all the enemies have moved, they've completely opened this this flank to us. And since they aren't covering that flank anymore, we can move up. UAV on the front in I-8. Thanks for taking it down. 
So now we can move up. If they had kept a few guys here, we wouldn't have been able to make this move. Put another quick snap of the heavy peeps. Ooh, mass lerm Novacat, the bastard. Ooh, that guy died. Critical damage. That double UAC 20. Hunchy. That guy's a bastard. Ooh. Little black frames there. Graphical bugs. It will never leave me alone. Another UAV on the front. Can't really take it out right now. Focusing on other people. Ah, oh, those heavy peeps missed. That's not a good thing. Ooh, Mad Cat shut down. On the left, Mad Cat shut down. Kilo, CT open. This is a very close fight. Side torso's gone on that guy. Sun Spider, Bravo, CT open. So many people are like one tap from dead here. Good, seven to four. We're making a, making a, some work here, getting it done, getting some things open. That guy's side torso is gone. Eight to four. We have a full lance advantage. We should be able to push in and take these guys out with no fear. Even though I am relatively open, they should be focused on other people. And the last one goes down, and we win the match. Yes. Oh, that was a good one. I really enjoyed that match. So it looks like, yeah, I did hit one of my allies with a heavy peep. Probably the uh, the commando's leg. I'm sorry, dude. But we did do 661 damage. No kills, but 11 assists. And three of those were kill most damage delts. With 500,000 C-bills almost. Great bonuses on my main account here. And 4,700 experience earned. Taking a look at the team stats... Ooh, ooh, our Hellbringer farmed like crazy. Good work. But otherwise, we're in the top part of the team, so we did well. Let us move on to another match. And for our next match, we have got Caustic Valley Skirmish. And hopefully I've gotten all my coughs out uh, before this match started. Uh... I was uh, hacking up a lung during the break. Ooh, that Battlemaster is in the wrong spot. That he he's in a very bad place. Target spotted. Yes. Ooh, the, all the tags. Oh, that's horrible. We can use this opportunity to get a few free hits while everyone is focused on eating his cookies. The uh, laser shot there was me misclicking. But thankfully, it looks like our allies are not shying away from this flank, which is a good thing. As if you can make this flank work, it's not a bad flank to work. But yeah, that uh, Battlemaster got his, his ass handed to him. You don't go on that side of the, of the thing right away, because you open yourself up to the entirety of the enemy team. That's just a, a known fact. And we are down two assaults already. We're in a very bad position. Okay. And this match is going to end uh, much quicker than I wanted it to. Best thing we can do now is be aggressive in another flank. And try to get some advantage. So we're going to use our mobility to cut hard into the right side. And see what we can do over here as we're losing that left. So we need to make some momentum elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We've got an Annihilator who's on the back foot. We have his back just barely. But if not, we can pump in some damage to him. And we can get our lights to go after him maybe. And try to open him up. We want him to turn away from us. Is he? Yes, he is. Now we can get some more damage into him while he's trying to turn back. We've got that side torso open on him, which is great for us. We saw that light coming in. That's not good for us. We have a, fl 
a flamer on us, so we're pretty screwed right now. Though, thankfully, we do have some pretty good heat, and uh, machine guns don't do much to us, as we've got the massive mass to critical hits. And that guy's actually shut down. Oh, it wasn't far enough away for the heavy PPCs to do damage. Damn. I got two lights on me in the center. So, <laughs> thankfully these guys aren't doing much. But still, our team is not doing that much themselves. So, there's not much we can do about this because we are going to lose this match. I think I hit my ally again. Which <laughs> is not a good thing. Ah. Uh, this wasn't a good match. Oh, I should have let that a bit more. Now he's in range. I just gotta use my medium lasers. He is not in range yet. I'll have him with my heavy peeps. And there's just two of us left. There's not much we can do here. So we're just gonna stop up and just take the hits because might as well <laughs> end the match, really. Oh. And that just happens sometimes. We did do 300 damage, but really, we just got into a bad match. We lost two assaults right at the beginning, and the game was over then. First one was from the Battlemaster going on the wrong side of the terrain, and the second one was from a Hatamoto Chi trying to support him, but being too aggressive in that support. And then from there, it snowballed. We weren't able to make the uh, aggressive push on the right side like I wanted to. What I wanted to do was kill that Annihilator and then come around. But unfortunately, there was those two lights that were there to harass me. While they couldn't kill me, really, because I had so much minus crit receiving, they stopped me from doing damage to the Annihilator, who lived. So, unfortunately, it didn't work out. But let us try again in another match. And for our last match of the video, we've got Skirmish on Solaris City. As we just fly away from the rest of the assaults and, oh my god, get massive frame drops. <laughs> Why so many frame drops? I'm so much faster than all the other assaults on the team, though. I'm just like, eh, I'll just see you guys later. <laughs> I'm out of here. Ah, uh, but the frames on this map. It will never be the correct for me. Hey. Hopefully, uh, he's shooting those under minimum range in order to not deal damage to his ally. We've got Blackjack. Mm -hmm. Let's see who we can maybe... Do we want to commit to a center push? Do we want to just go in? We got a couple guys going left, so why don't we go in? We'll throw something at the blackjack. We'll go duck up cover here. We got a direwolf on the left. Now, is that a direwolf alone, or is he coming into center? Okay, he's coming into center. Let's uh, join up with his dire, and let's go push this left side right here. The enemy may, may be coming in right behind him. But we're going to just poke that side. Don't see anything there. We got fire coming from behind. So we're going to flip that around and cover the direwolf's ass. Because we don't want our direwolf to die. So he's going to cover anyone coming in that doorway, and I'll cover anyone coming in the door behind him. So that way, he will know it's a good time to turn around, just like that. Now if he's turned around and looking there, we have, ooh, good, we have a linebacker that's going to cover this doorway. So I can help with the dar. Oh, he's going. He's going out. He's getting ballsy. There's somebody there. There is. King crab. We'll let our heat dissipate a little bit. We got the king crab down to red armor, and our allies have ripped apart his CT. We'll go forward and just end it with a nice little flick shot. Ooh, missed that flick shot, but the guy goes down anyway. 
that is okay. We're up three now. We are doing excellent. We have a Night Star up top with Ultra 20s just peppering us with massive annoyance. Come forward again. Pound that damage into him. Right into his side torso. We're going to go for that mech side. Got it down to orange and his arm down to orange. We're going to wait for a little bit of heat dissipation. We're going to flip on heat here. Oh, that, now we can see him. Yeah, you ain't going anywhere. Ah, just missed him. Damn that convergence. Oh, well. Just shot over on top of him. But we are 5 nothing. This is going the exact opposite of the last match. In the last match, we sucked ass and we got completely destroyed. In this match, the enemy team is getting completely destroyed. We're absorbing our fire while our Vindicator has gotten up there to uh, sort of tango with him. Although, we would really like it if he could drag him back to the edge so we can get some hits in. Just a little bit more Vindicator. And, ooh, I think the Vindicator shut down up there. Which is not a good thing, as it allowed the Night Star to clean him up. But, the Night Star is CT crit, and we do have the heavy peeps. We're just going to wait for the heat, so we can do an alpha. The Night Star is there. Oh, and he got taken out by somebody else while he was staring at me. Turn off our heat vision here. And that's it. It's 11 to 2. Yeah, basically the exact opposite of the match we were just in. Get stomped, then stomp. Now we just have to find the last enemy, which is a DC. Last one, the disco. So, the question is... Uh... Yeah. Where is he? And... Is he DC'd at spawn? Or is he DC'd somewhere on the map? So it is time to spread out and search. Let's take a look. Uh, da, 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 he is Olaman. So if we look back... Oh, I thought I had these... I thought I had my scroll up in chat things... Um, hockeyed. Oh well. I wanted to see if he disconnected at the start of the match or disconnected somewhere after the match had begun. But for now, we just need to head back and scour some spawn areas. So we're going to take a nice... Whoa, whoa, whoa! I saw something. He's over here in Delta 2. Yep, there he is. I don't want to look at him. Because I, I don't want my mech to automatically target him. Because if I look at him, my mech will automatically target him. But I want the kill. <laughs> so I don't want my allies to know where he is yet. Uh, is he facing away from me? Yes, he is. He's mine, boys. He's mine. Don't you dare take him. He's mine. <laughs> Free solo kill. <laughs> but yeah, you can do that. You can not look at an enemy. Because if you stared at him, you would auto-target. If you don't look at him and just sort of know that they're there, you can do that and sneak up on them. But, 313,000 Z-Bells earned, 1,600 experience gained. Still a low damage game, 373. And 2 kills, 5 assists. So really, the only match out of this episode that was sort of representative of what this mech can really do is the first one. The other two, where there's an example of being stomped and then stomping, Sometimes it works out for you, and sometimes it doesn't. And then sometimes you have a really good match. So, take that first match into consideration when thinking about this build. But that is going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.